As we continue on the Sports Max Zone on this Tuesday, BBC Sports has been facing backlash for the appointment of Alex K. Jelski as their director of sport. K. Jelski, during his tenure at Times Magazine, wrote an article five years ago back in 2019 about trans athletes. He compared then women's concerns about the fairness of biological men competing in women's sports to racists and that Martina Navratilova and Sharon Davis, who spoke out on uh, transport, were not experts. Now, in an attempt to make his point clearer, Kajelski said how mad and nasty it would be to argue Jamaican sprinters or Ethiopian marathon runners only compete against each other, as they also had genetic advantages. Kajelski issued a statement to clear the air on what he meant. He said, I was making the point that there were not to my knowledge, many transgender athletes performing at the top of their sport. And consequently, they were not a major feature of elite sport. I had, he said, no intention of being disrespectful to any former or current athletes. Instead, I was calling for kindness in the debate because I did not want my words to have the reverse effect. And I have never called into question anyone's expertise on women's sport. I'm not a campaigner. And I will not be advocating for any position in my role at the BBC. Anyone who works for the BBC is expected to leave their views at the door and approach issues with impartiality. Under my leadership, BBC Sport will report these issues impartially. So um, a lot of controversy there. Um, th this, this story has gained a lot of traction in, in recent weeks especially with the Olympics on and so mm. on. What do you make of this story? I think I understand what he's trying to say, mm. but I think his analogy was wrong or quote, completely incorrect because what he's suggesting is that Ethiopian runners are closer to home. Jamaican female sprinters are somehow abnormal or somehow out of the ordinary. And that, for me, rubs yeah. the wrong way. And I mm. think... The point I think he was trying to make is that to put transgender athletes in a category by themselves, which is something I have suggested, mm -hmm. would be like putting Jamaican athletes, Jamaican female sprinters, in a category of their own, having them compete against yourselves. It's not the same. It's not, it's not even close to being the same. And I think it, what he said was lost in translation because of how he worded it. I think it's unfortunate because it comes off of being misogynistic and in some instances racist as well. Yeah, well, a lot of the backlash has suggested or the narrative coming through is that people take it as a, as a racist comment. Um, I'm not sure if the likes of Martina Navratilova hitting out at him um, is coming from that angle because they have strong views about transgender issues themselves. But the, the comments he made were from 2019. And uh, because of that background, there are people, based on what he said then, upset that the BBC would have appointed him head of their, their sport department. Is there any merit then to the people who feel as if BBC should not have gone that route, given you know, what his track record is with those comments. Yeah, the thing is, he was appointed in April, I think, yes, at April. BBC. Yeah, April. That is coming to the fore now. It tells you that this has been simmering for a while. I'm wondering what triggered this latest outburst from Martina and others who have a concern about the statements being regarded as misogynistic. Yes. Um, it's an awkward situation. I mean... As head of BBC, you're covering enti the entire sport, global sports. And maybe there is a concern that the perceived bias could impact the way the BBC covers certain sports, especially as it relates to black women, transgender women, or women who are, seemed, are deemed to be different. And that then creates an awkwardness for, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the, the media house in terms of the perception, because oftentimes the perception is often greater than the truth. And the perception right now is that those comments were misplaced and unfortunate, and it could affect or impact anything that the BBC does that could be construed as being controversial, could be, you know, pulled back to that point where they appointed him as 
as head of BBC, our director of BBC Sport, given the bias that that is perceived from the comments that he made. It's, it's a conflicting issue, and, and you hear me struggling with yes, it, because yes. it's... Because you keep using perceived, because, yeah, because you don't want to accuse him of uh, putting a narrative out there that he is not guilty of. Yeah, because it's, 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 a, it's more of a perception than reality, because I think, having read through what he said, I don't think he would have intended to communicate it that way. But the, 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 the analogies that, he's, that he drew are... Very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Very unfortunate. Yeah, and I, I think the BBC would feel a little awkward taking this kind of criticism, especially from the racist standpoint, because I've listened to the BBC for decades. And to be fair to the BBC and how they apply their journalistic um, output, I see them focusing a lot on, on African stories. Mm -hmm. They, more than anyone else, World Service, BBC World Absolutely. Service, um, they carry a lot of stories about, about the African continent. And they're dedicated shows to that as well. Yes, yes. So I, I think they would feel a little um, incensed that people may be looking at them in the exact way that they don't want to be viewed. Exactly. And, and that's the thing. You know, as I say, we'll go back again to the perception, because... In reality, the BBC has been has proven themselves to be pretty objective for the most part. Yes. I mean, there are instances where I can point to that they have been particularly biased in a certain way. Yeah. But the reality is that the perception is overriding all of that, and that's the issue here. Mm -hmm. Because Jelski represents that perception mm -hmm. that they could be moving in a direction that is not fear mm -hmm. to transgender athletes to black women or to black athletes in general. Mm. And that's the problem. Would, would part of the issue here, Leighton, be that his role, when he worked previously with The Times, may have been a different kind of role than he has now with the BBC, yeah. in the sense that he was, he, was more, he was more relied on to give opinionated pieces as opposed to now? Because, as he said, that at the BBC, your personal views are left right at the, the door. door. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thing is that the time, well, the, we know that time has specific biases. So we can understand him penning that column for the Times. It, it, it fits yes. with the Times. Mm -hmm. but, but with the BBC, it's a completely different dynamic. Mm -hmm. And that's where the issue is, because then the rub is, is not as smooth as it should have been, because for the Times, there's a particular narrative that the Times tries to follow that would fit into what he wrote then. For the BBC, it's a completely different narrative altogether. Yeah, and, you know, because the transgender issue and gender issues generally are very sensitive issues, Extremely I, think, so. I think that is part of the reason why he's, he's under so much pressure now, because there are people who feel really strongly about these issues, and while globally there are varying views and sometimes... It's a polarizing issue, the yes, transgender issue. a very issues, polarizing because, issue. Because, um, you, you, you know, there are many people who believe that if you're a male and you transition to a woman, that makes you a woman. I'm, you know, my personal view on it is that just doesn't make sense to me. You can always put a Porsche engine inside of your VW. It'll always be, it'll always be a Porsche engine, mm -hmm. regardless of what's on the exterior. Yes. So, you know, but there are others who, who feel differently, and they're entitled to their, their opinions, just like I'm entitled to mine. But when you're moving into an environment away from... What, that, that has a specific bias towards basically a lot of things that our people are in general are against. I'm moving into an organization that is, appears to be more level-headed in terms of that approach. Mm -hmm. Then it it's almost feels like a misfit. And that's where I think the discomfort comes from, especially with big names like Martina and Davratilova lashing out because of her own opinions on what the transgender issue should be, you know, whether or not they should be allowed to compete you know, against women, that, that whole issue there is, is, is what is convoluting this, this debate and convoluting the whole idea that he shouldn't be a part of the, or shouldn't be leading up or heading up the BBC. Yeah, and I want to, to his credit, I want to make 
clear here something that he said when he said in women's sports to racists and that Martina Navratilova and Sharon Davis, who spoke out on transport, were not experts. He says in an attempt to make his point clearer, Kijelski has said how mad and nasty it would be to argue that Jamaican sprinters or Ethiopian marathon runners only compete against each other as they also had genetic advantages. Now, because he's saying that they, they, they have genetic advantages, advantages, that is where he, he, he attracts the criticism. Exactly. But he did say, he prefaced that by saying how nasty, how nasty and how crazy, crazy it, would it would be, be. to suggest you know that that there was an issue with the Jamaican sprinters but, and but, and the Ethiopian distance runners, which goes back to my whole idea, of the <laughs> perception of it. Yes, because the way it was worded suggests that uh, somehow Jamaican sprinters and Ethiopian runners have a genetic advantage. We don't necessarily don't. Yes. Uh, well, maybe who knows? The fact is that we're not. That's not a, a point of fact. It's a point of opinion, yeah. and that opinion is polarizing in many ways because there are people who feel one way and there are people who feel another. And that's where I think the whole idea, because despite the fact that he prefaced his comments by saying that, then now pulls yes. them into that argument yes. about you know, the similarities with transgender athletes. Yes, yes. And I remember many years ago, Leighton, on this very Sports Max Zone show, you had, when the transgender issues came up with uh, Casta Semenya, you were very sympathetic to Casta Semenya's case. Yeah. And up to this point, you feel she was hard done by. Yeah, because the, I, at the point, IWF and subsequently World Athletics classified her as female. Mm. Then they went back and changed the dynamic and saying that she was not. But they were the ones who put her in that classification in the first place. Mm -hmm. So then to, then to punish her for their own classification, mm -hmm. then to me was unfair because she was been running as a woman for years under their own rules. Mm -hmm. Then to change the rules on her, it's like you're playing football in the middle of the game and then offsides, you know, the offside rule is suddenly then re removed yes. for one side. Yes. Then it, it, it's, it's an unfair advantage to the team that's, that's attacking, you know, in an offside position when... The reality is that you created those rules to begin with. Mm -hmm. So I found it unfair to Semenya to say that she was a female. Because remember, they tested her after, was it, 2008? Yes, I think they so. They ran gender tests Test, yes. on her yes. and declared her a woman. They did. They, and then they, turned, they changed their argument and said she wasn't. So they have to make up their minds, you know, who she, what she really is. Yeah. But they were the ones who classified her as a female and then tried to change the rules yeah. mid midstream because she was dominant. She was so dominant. Yeah, but if what you are saying is so clear cut, then Leighton, why is it that legally she has not, up to this point, um, earned the benefit of a legal position on it to to support her position? Because the powers that be don't want to have their faces rubbed in mud over it, <laughs> because they're the one who changed the rules, and then they're trying to impose those rules, the change rules on her, mm. when they, imp you know. So in, in trying to save face, they can't then retract what you're trying to do because she's already been excluded. So, so as to save face, they have to hold hard to their position and double down on their position to then try to prove themselves right when they were, in fact, incorrect. Because, yeah. you know, you know you, you, they keep changing rules. Semenya is running for years as a woman, and then she's winning and people are complaining that she's dominant. You could say the same thing about Faith Kipiegon, right? But why, why haven't they done that then? You know, so you see, it, it, it can't be because she was dominant. It's because they, they erred in the beginning, if, that, if you can look at that that way, and then they're trying to correct their wrong by being even further wrong, by then excluding her from the sport yeah. just because she's been dominant. Yeah. You know, I think it's wrong. Okay, well, we just um, sort of derailed there with the transgender yeah. issue, a different <laughs> aspect of the transgender issue. But this uh, segment really dealt with the appointment of Alex K. Jelski, the new director of sport. Well, not that new anymore. He's been there for months now at uh, the British Broadcasting Corporation, uh, and it has caused um, some, some issues of uh, anger among some groups because of uh, some statements he had made while he worked with the Times regarding transgender issues and comparing uh, Jamaican sprinters and uh, Ethiopian distance runners um, with having or being associated with having some unfair advantage. So I'm not sure how much more traction this story will get. Uh, maybe it has seen its pinnacle and will uh, die down now. But um, if, it, if, it, if it gathers more steam, 
uh, Sportsmax will be will be following it for sure. Yeah, because yeah, well, let's move on. <laughs> All right, <laughs> we'll be back with more on the Sportsmax zone after this.